Hello, everybody. I'm Ken Raggio, and this is a Prophecy News Break for September the 10th, 2021. Thank you for joining me tonight. My subject is preparing for great tribulation. The globalists will not be stopped. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you don't like that title, and to be honest, I don't like that title either, but I am going to talk to you about it today. Preparing, preparing for great tribulation, globalists will not be stopped. And again, thank you for joining me. This is a prophecy program. I'm a Bible prophecy preacher. I'm a Pentecostal preacher. I'm a Bible believer, and I've been following Bible prophecies for over 50 years. I've been writing on Bible prophecies for about 30 years, got lots of books in print and hundreds of videos on published and just millions of words have been published over the years on the subject of Bible prophecies. And we've talked about this at great length on many different occasions. The church of Jesus Christ is headed for great tribulation. Jesus said it in Matthew 24 and 14, Matthew 24, 15, he said, when you therefore shall see the abomination spoken of by the prophet Daniel stand in the holy place, then let them which be in Judea flee to the mountains. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world of this time, no, nor shall ever be. Now, folks, I'm going to cut through the chase and just talk, plain talk with you today. A lot of people have for a very long time been an absolute utter denial that the church will go through the great tribulation. I've been arguing this 25 years. I began in 1983, believing from the teachings of the Bible that the church will go through the great tribulation. So that's what that 17 plus 21, that's 38 years. Now I've been preaching that the Bible tells us that the church will go through the great tribulation. I've confirmed it over and over and over and over again. The Bible proves to us unequivocally that Jesus Christ will not come until great tribulation has passed. I'm not going to deal with all that subject as in terms of explanation or proofs, because I've done it so many times in previous videos. I have to go, go back to the previous video, go back about two or three videos. You see those, the last two videos that I did on the subject of the Pope and the confirmation of the covenant. I got a full explanation of all that at the end of that most recent video. Go back and watch that. Look at the very end of that video it's for all those biblical explanations of why the church is going through the great tribulation. But here's what's happening. We're now, we're now at that point where we're going to see world circumstances become more and more and more oppressive. And you have to understand that this is a seven year period of time that the Bible tells us about in the book of Daniel. And only the last 42 months of that seven year prophecy is actually the great tribulation. The great tribulation is not seven years long. It's three and a half years long, or I should say it will be three and a half years long, but it will begin when the Pope confirms a covenant with many for one prophetic week. That is seven years. And we are right now on the verge of seeing the proofs that the Pope is entering into that pact. He's entering into that covenant with the whole wide world. The document is called Laudato C. It is a climate change agenda written by Cardinal Peter Turkson, the original draft of it, but it's been upgraded. And as I showed in at least two videos in the last 30 days, at great length, at great length, I've showed that. Laudato C from the Catholic Church is simply a rewrite of an agenda that's been on the scene since the 1970s when uh, a United Nations Undersecretary General named Maurice Strong and many of his cohorts, including Kofi Annan and some of the other Secretary Generals of the United Nations, began to establish the, the climate change agenda. We've seen it in the form of the Millennial Development Goals, we've seen it in the form of the Sustainability Goals, Agenda 21, the Rio Conference in Rio de Janeiro, 1992, and most recently in Agenda 2030. And it is, it's not just about climate, it's about controlling the world. It is the 
global world government. You've been hearing all your life about a new world order. Well, guys, it's coming. It is here. The new world order is here. You've been hearing about the mark of the beast all of your lives. Well, the mark of the beast is, is imminent. It's getting very, very close. We are within, we're, we're within potentially as soon as three and a half, four years from now, seeing the mark of the beast that the Bible's prophesied. We have to see that, that last seven years of Bible prophecies that's described in the ninth chapter of the book of Daniel. Guys, I'm through arguing whether or not the Bible's true. As far as I'm concerned, there is absolutely no contest. This Bible is true. I don't care, I don't care what else you believe about the world. I don't care if you believe in space aliens and UFOs. I don't, I don't care if you believe in other gods or the spirits. I don't believe what you care. I don't care what you believe. I've spent my life in this book. I've seen it proven over and over again. This book is not fallible. It is infallible. It is the divinely inspired word of God. All scripture is inspired by God and is profitable for doctrine and correction, reproof and instruction, and righteousness, that the man of God may be thoroughly furnished unto good works. This is God's word to the entire world. This is God's message to all of creation. You're not going to talk me out of this Bible. And you're not going to talk me out of the prophecies of this Bible. And you're not going to talk me out of the fact that we are at the end of the age. We are right now embarking on that last seven years. We're about to see absolute, irrefutable, incontestable, unequivocal proof that this world is entering into that last seven years. And the Pope is the one that's going to show us the proofs of it all because Daniel nine tells us that the people of the prince that destroyed Jerusalem back in 70 AD are the people of the prince that will come in the last days and, and confirm that covenant. When we look in our history books and see that it was the Romans that destroyed Jerusalem in 70 AD after Jesus had spent his time on earth, that told us the fact that the Romans destroyed Jerusalem and the Holy temple in 70 AD tells us that the, the person who is going to confirm the covenant in the last seven years of Bible prophecy is indeed the Prince of Rome. And we know in modern times, the ground Prince, the person who represents that demon spirit of Rome is in fact, the Pope of the Roman Catholic church. Now, what does that seven years indicate? It is the last seven years before Jesus Christ will return to resurrect the Christian dead to rapture the living Christians and to conduct the battle of Armageddon and destroy the enemies of Israel and the church and his own personal enemies and establish a 1000 year kingdom of Christ on earth. Folks, we are, we are getting closer and closer by the minute to the second coming of Jesus Christ. But we have to see those last seven years of prophecies fulfilled before Jesus returns to fight the battle of Armageddon. Now, if you don't believe this, you're not smart. It's going to take you a long time to prove this Bible is not true. And I don't have that time. I've already spent 70 years of my life. Almost I'll be 70 here in about two weeks. I've spent all of my life in this book. And I'm telling you, this book is exactly right. And the prophecies of this book are exactly right. And what you and I are seeing right now are the end time prophecies that we've been reading out. Go ahead and read for yourself the 24th chapter of Matthew, all the end time prophecies. They're happening in our generation since Israel was reborn in 1948 and the new state of Israel has come back as it were from the dead. We've been living in the last generation. Everything in Matthew 24 has happened in the last 70 years. Everything in Luke 21, the last 70 years, Mark 14, I think it is the last 70 years, all the prophecies of all the prophets, old Testament and new pertain to the last days. We're seeing them fulfilled in our generation. And the book of Psalms says that generation is 70 to 80 years. Look at, look at chapter 90, verse 10 of the book of Psalms, and you'll see the proof of that. And so here we are embarking on the last seven years. And this papal construct, this encyclical called Laudato Si, has been the Pope's throwdown on global climate change. And it's more than climate change. It's going to affect oil and gas. It's going to affect the world economy. It's going to affect all of agriculture and livestock production. It's going to affect, affect industry. It's going to affect the economy. It's going to affect the banking system. It's going to affect all personal freedoms. It's going to affect property ownership. It's going to 
uh, affect privacy issues that is just going to blow your mind. All of this is embedded in the Pope's Laudato C seven year action plan. And he launched it in May of 2021 this year. And he's going to the United Nations from all the reports we're hearing. He's going to the United Nations in 2021, November. And he's going to ask the whole United Nations to join in on this. Now, I'm going to share some things here with you. I've got a lot of material and I don't want to take a long time. In fact, I don't want this program to be as long as the last couple of programs I've done. So I'm just going to jump into this and tell you that this Laudato C. Here's, here's an article from World Catholic News. It says, is Laudato C just a bundle of papers in Asia? And this is dated September the 10th. Christians across the globe are observing the season of creation. Now, I showed you this in two previous videos this recently, that the Pope has established September 1 to October the 4th, uh, which is called this season of creation. And, and when I first read about this and began to report about it, I just really had a serious question. What is this season of creation all about? And they're going to be promoting climate change for an entire month. They're going to be praying for our mother earth during this period. He, he claims to have two and a half billion Christians praying for this around the world, which <laughs> I don't believe that for a second. I don't believe there's, I don't believe for a second, there's two and a half billion Christians praying for the climate, but nevertheless, this season, look at this article. Christians across the globe are observing this season of creation from September to early October, the theme restoring our common home. The season has an ecumenical flavor as the world's 2.2 billion Christians unite, pray, and act for God's creation and our common home, the earth. In 1989, this is what I want you to notice. The ecumenical patriarch of Constantinople, Demetrios I, established September 1st as a day of prayer for creation. So this season of creation was launched actually in 1989 by the patriarch of Constantinople or Eastern, the Eastern Catholic church, if you want to call it that the Orthodox church over there and the world council of churches, get this, the world council of churches extended this season of prayer and celebration until October the 4th the feast of St. Francis and Pope Francis officially welcomed that season into the Catholic church in 2019. So, so get this, the Orthodox Catholics of the Eastern Catholics, uh, the, the Pope of Constantinople launched this in, on September the 1st, back in the year 1989. And then the world council of churches got on board. Now I'm not going to do a study on the world council of churches, but some of you know what I'm talking about. Some of you don't. The World Council of Churches is a globalist attempt to bring all the religions of the world into one voice, one belief, one system. They want to cancel out all doctrinal differences. Basically, they want to get totally away from the Bible, and they want to convert all the religions of the world into a globalist religion. And if, you don't, if you don't remember it, I'll remind you that the Bible said that the whole world is going to worship the beast in Revelation 13. In these last days, this world government is going to be uh, in singularity with a one world religion. And I'm here to tell you that the Roman Catholic Church and the World Council of Churches are the big players in that world religion effort, along with, as we read in the previous video, there's three big leaders in, in the world of so-called Christianity that are, are endorsing this Laudato Si. Of course, the leader of it is the Pope of the Roman Catholic Church, Pope Francis. Then you have the Bishop of the Anglican Church there in Britain, and you also have the Pope of Constantinople or the Pope of Eastern Orthodoxy. So these three big so-called Christian religions of the world are all joined together on Laudato C. And he's going to bring the United Nations in on this. And he's going to bring in governments from all over the world. He's going to try to get all the Catholics to sign on to it. He's going to try to get all the nations to sign on it and all the religions to sign on. This is going to become the new world governmental document. The Laudato C seven-year action plan is designed to bring Laudato C into the mindset. And I tell who was it uh, said, whoever controls the narrative controls the world. 
And I'm going to tell you who's controlling the narrative right now. The Pope of the Roman Catholic Church is making every effort for the Roman Catholic Church to control the, nef- the, the, the narrative in these last days. And along with the Roman Catholic Church, you have these globalists like the World Economic Forum, people like Klaus Schwab and Kristalina Georgina of the International Monetary Fund. And you have the European banking system and you have the Federal Reserve Bank and you have, of course, the Rothschild Rockefeller clan of all the global elites. You have uh, Bill and uh, Melinda Gates Foundation, Bill Gates. You got the George Soros, all of his left wing organizations, and the British Royals and the Saudi Royals. All of these elitists, many of them are multi billionaires, some of them are trillionaires, and they're trying to control the world and they're coming together under the leadership of the Roman Catholic Church. And that's what the Bible tells us in the 17th, 18th chapter of the book of Revelation that the woman is going to ride a scarlet colored beast in the last days. This is the Roman Catholic Church riding a, a despotic, scarlet red communist world government based in Europe in the last days. And we're seeing it come to power right in front of our very eyes at this very moment. I mean, at this very moment. Let me go back to this article here. 1989, the ecumenical patriarch established September 1 as the day of prayer for creation. And then the World Council of Churches extended the season of prayer and celebration till October 4th, which is the Feast of St. Francis. And Pope Francis officially welcomed this season into the Catholic Church in 2019, linking it with his teachings of his groundbreaking 2015 environmental encyclical Laudato Si. As guided by the Vatican's dicastery for promoting integral human development. Man, they come up with the wildest titles for all their projects. Catholics have been encouraged to participate in prayer, reflection, and action, such as discussions, rallies, and tree plantations during the season. Guys, I, I got to tell you something. Jesus Christ has nothing to do with this thing. This is, has nothing to do with the true church of the living God. This is a Roman Catholic church deception that is promoting new world order and global despotism. Look what it says. Six years ago, when Laudato Si came out, it was hailed as an influential papal document that addressed crucial global issues connected with the environment. In the Christian world and beyond, Laudato Si was able to create a strong buzz. In 2019, Climate Central, a U.S.-based climate science group, predicated or predicted, predicated that a sea level rise by 2050 will hit some 300 million people globally, and 237 million of them will be in Asia, including 42 million in Bangladesh. Guys, these people are are fixing to sell us a bill of goods. Now, I, I'm just going to move on from that. The White House is on board with this. Now, I'm just going to take you back. How many years is this uh, 12, 13 years ago? How long has it been? 13, 14 years since uh, Barack Obama run, won his first term at, in the White House. And we saw that he ran on the platform of change, fundamental change. He promised us when he ran for president, however many years ago that was. 13, 14 years ago, I guess. He promised that he was going to fundamentally change America. Can I tell you what that meant? That meant he was going to give America to globalism and secondarily to Islam. We saw it happening under the presidency of Barack Obama. And then we saw Donald Trump coming here under a patriotic movement, under a, a, a conservative right wing movement. And for four years, we really, we thought most of those conservatives thought, that, that Trump was going to save the day, but then we lost that battle to the globalists in the election. All of the election theft that took place will apparently never going to be brought to justice. And so here we find ourselves in a presidency, an illegitimate presidency. And anybody that's got any sense realizes that Joe Biden is not running the country. It's Barack Obama pulling the strings behind the scene and behind Barack Obama are the globalists. Barack Obama is simply a mouthpiece for the globalists. He's run by George Soros and the Bill Ayers and all their 
wicked people that are out to rule the world, Bill and Hillary Clinton and all the rest of that crowd from the Bilderbergers and the CFR groups and all the, NAS, the World Economic Forum. These people are wicked, evil people that want to destroy all nations and sovereignty. They want to take away all of our liberties. They want to utterly destroy democracy, democracies and Republican governments from the face of the earth. They want to destroy the Constitution of the United States. I just pulled up this little article from the Western Journal. I mean, it's today's date. White House reveals Biden consults with Obama about a range of issues. I'm not going to read all this. You don't need to hold deal. You know what I'm talking about. You don't have to be convinced of that. Now, they're, they're promoting all of this globalist agenda, and among all that is this big, nasty COVID event, this big pandemic that we've been dealing with now for close to two years. Guys, you see it, you see it, you see it. it unless you're just utterly blind, you see what's happening to us. They're locking us down. Look at Australia. They're throwing people in prison camps in Australia because they won't take the vaccine. They're telling people in Australia they can't leave their homes. Friends, I don't know where you're listening. If you're listening to me in America, I got to tell you something. It's coming to a city near you. It's coming to a city near you. My subject tonight is preparing for great tribulation. The globalists are not going to be stopped. I love conservatism. I love to hear right-wingers standing up and standing up for our liberties. I love to hear people like Candace Owen pleading for uh, common sense and all this stuff, denouncing all these globalists. But I have to tell you, Tucker Carlson is not going to save us. Sean Hannity is not going to save us. Candace Owen's not going to save us. Mike Lindell is not going to save us. General Mike Flynn's not going to save us. Sidney Powell's not going to save us. Lynn Wood's not going to save us. Nobody's going to stop the globalists. Nobody's going to shut down Obama's White House. Nobody's going to shut it down. You say, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The QAnon movement's going to save the day. The, well, you wait and see. You wait and see. They may pull off some temporary reprieve. There may be something that happens that looks like salvation, but I know what the Bible says. I know what the Bible says. And that's what people refuse. They keep believing Trump's going to make a comeback and that the white house is going to be taken over. And that this thing is all going to go back to patriotism and constitutional Republic. I'm telling you, you'd better start preparing for the great tribulation because the globalists are not going to be stopped. Why do I say that? Because the Bible says that the Bible says it. I'm pleading for God Almighty's cause in this thing. I, I voted Republican, and I, and I hate most of what Republicans stand for because we got rhinos in the Republican Party. I'm not a Democrat. I don't, want to, I don't want to stand before the judgment seat of Christ having known I voted Democrat. I don't believe I'd be saved. You can't stand for what the Democratic Party stands for and be saved. <laughs> Prove me wrong. Show me the Bible. Show me, a, show me this the abortion rights in the Bible. Show that to me. Show me all this liberalism, wacko stuff. Show me all this left-wing LGBT stuff in the Bible. Show it to me. Show me where God is for that stuff. God is against that stuff, and you know good and well I'm telling you the truth. But they're not going to be stopped. And the reason they're not going to be stopped is because the Bible says they're not going to be stopped. God Almighty said, the apostle Paul wrote in the book of Romans. I'm going to read it to you guys. You need to be reminded of what the Bible says. God said in Romans 1, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth and unrighteousness because that which may be known of God is manifest in them for God has showed it to them. Verse 21, he said, because when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imagination. And their foolish heart was darkened, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools.
Are you hearing what I'm saying? They changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made by, like corruptible man, the birds and four-footed beasts. Wherefore, God gave them up to their uncleanness, to their lusts of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a line, worship and serve the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. God, for this cause, God gave them up to vile affections, even their women to change the natural use into that which is against nature. Likewise, also the men leaving the natural use of the woman burned in their lust one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet and even as they did not like to retain god in their knowledge god gave them over to a reprobate mind god gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient we got a reprobate world we're living in and it's not going to turn around we've had a hundred years of great spiritual Christian revival. We've had a worldwide revival throughout the 20th century. We've seen hundreds of millions of people receive the Holy Ghost. We've seen millions and millions of millions of people baptized in Jesus' name. We've seen great churches built all over the world in the past hundred years. But, but Paul, the apostle said in second chapter of second Thessalonians, he said, I beseech you brethren by the coming of our Lord and by our gathering together unto him, speaking of the rapture of the church the first resurrection the rapture of the church is our gathering together unto him he said that you be not so shaken in spirit and mind by word or by deed as from us as that the day of the lord is at hand he said that day shall not come that day of our gathering together that day of the first resurrection that day of the rapture shall not come except there be a falling away first and the man of sin be revealed. I'm telling you, we are headed for the great tribulation and nobody is going to save us from that. Nobody, nobody, nobody. The United States is not going to be saved from the great tribulation. We are not going to have a great worldwide revival. We are seeing apostasy because the Bible says we're going to see apostasy. God is giving this world over as I speak to a reprobate mind. He said, there's going to be a mark that's going to be put in our foreheads. And that's what you see on the screen right now. You see what I'm showing you here? This international certificate of vaccination or prophylaxis, also known as the CART one or the yellow card is an official vaccine report created by the world health organization. This takes my breath away, guys. The World Health Organization, with the support of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and the Rockefeller Foundation and all these other globalist entities have produced what is known as the International Certificate of Vaccination or Prophylaxis. It is a yellow card. And it's going to become an um, it's going to become a passport. It's going to become a blockchain based microchip before it's all over with. And it's going to be inserted into your body. A yellow card. Why do they call it a yellow card? You know, the last yellow badge we talked about, look at this. Anybody recognize that one? Yellow badges also referred to as Jewish badges are badges that Jews were ordered to wear at various times during the Middle Ages by some caliphates. That's interesting. At various times during the medieval and early modern period by some European powers. This wasn't, in, this wasn't introduced by Adolf Hitler. This has been around for 500 years, the yellow patches, to mark the Jews back then. Now it's being used to mark Christians too. A yellow card. Let's move on. ID2020 Alliance is a unique in its philosophy. And okay, I'm talking about global ID. It's not just a vaccine passport. It is a global ID. That's the whole object. They're not worried about COVID. They don't give a flip if you die of COVID. This is not being done to protect you from COVID. being done to control you. It's been done to force you to take a mark. Eventually, we're going to have a global ID put into our system. 
and that vaccine passport is just a precursor to a global ID passport. And we're just so, we're just so close. And guess who brought this into existence? Accenture, Microsoft, Rockefeller Foundation. This alliance. Man, how is it that Bill Gates just never goes away? We, he never goes away. He's everywhere. He's like the devil. He's walking to and fro and near seeking whom he may devour. Bill Gates is after every last one of us. They're not trying to heal us. They're trying to control us. You better start preparing for the tribulation because the globalists are not going to be stopped. Now, I've been following cryptocurrency since August of 2020, and I've been studying the global currencies and what is, what is in progress, what is developing, what is coming on the scene. I've watched this Bitcoin, number one coin in the world. Right now, the price of it's hovering around $50,000, down and up, down and up. It's like a yo-yo. Ethereum is the number two cryptocurrency in the world and usually in the top four is xrp xrp will be the the banking rails for the new banking system another coin called xlm was created by a guy named jeb mccaleb who helped found xrp on the ripple platform now he also created the xlm platform in conjunction with ibm beginning in 2017 ibm is involved in all this microsoft's involved in it Bill Gates is involved. These coins are all coming on the scene and it's, it's just a, it's a multifaceted multi-spectrum development. We've got coins of all kinds coming from all kinds of places, but they're all headed for one thing. And that is a global digital currency. And only God himself knows exactly how it will be in the last moment. But I'm here to tell you, and you, you listen to what I'm telling you, this final version the final version of this cryptocurrency that will ultimately be the mark of the beast will be not just a crypto coin but it will be a global identification it won't just be a digital wallet that holds coins it will be a it will be a digital global id and we saw this come we, we saw this thing begin to develop in 2005 when george bush george w bush who was the president at the time signed what was called then the Real ID Act. And the Real ID Act, the whole purpose and intent of the Real ID Act was to solidify the identification process on all the state driver's license. So that Texas driver's license, California driver's license, New York driver's license, all the 50 states would have a compatible driver's license. They would all operate. They would be all interoperable because at that time they were not. And so they set a standard. And the amazing thing about the global, about the real ID standard, it was based on a global passport. It was adopting the same standards that was being used for the global passport. So when you look at it close enough, you realize that the whole point of bringing the state of Texas into the real ID system is that the state of Texas driver's license will be compatible with a global ID. And a lot of the states resisted that we had, you had states like Missouri and Texas that resisted for long. Uh, there's been many, many states that did not want to participate in the real ID system. But finally, at long last, at last report, I think every state in the union now has adopted real ID. If there's one standing out, you, you got to know it can't be long before they'll all be there. But what's, what is the point I'm making? The point I'm making is we're only a hair's breadth a breadth away from the adoption of a global identification system. And you have to know, you, you surely know by now that it's not going to be a paper passport. It's not going to be a little gray notebook that you put in your pocket. It's going to be a chip in your hand and it's going to be a, a cryptocurrency wallet. And it's going to be a digital ID. It's going to be a vaccine passport and the whole ball of wax all wrapped up in one. And we're moving with lightning speed directly to that. And they're not going to be stopped. You can get in the streets and riot by the hundreds of thousands against this vaccine, but you're not going to stop it. 
You can riot. You can burn down the place if that's what you got a mind to do, but you're not going to stop it. You can protest to your congressman. You can call every congressman in America. You can literally lock down the phone system in Congress, and you're not going to change it because the globalists are not going to be stopped. You say, well, Ken, you are a fatalist. I am not a fatalist. I'm a Bible prophecy preacher. I'm a believer in the Bible prophecies, and I know what the prophecies say. We are almost done, guys. This is not going to go on. Jesus Christ is coming back. You got all these coins coming on the scene. There's digital ID stuff. I want you to watch this right here. Uh, take just about three or four minutes and watch this. According to Article 6 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, everyone has the right to recognition everywhere as a person before the law. However, 1.2 million people in the world live without documented proof of their existence. That means they're excluded from modern society and the everyday activities that we take. They're making a case that everybody needs a global ID. Believes that the future could be different. This public private partnership is dedicated to solving the challenges related to Watch closely. today's world. To do this, we need to understand what truly defines our identity and how we prove it. We need to appreciate the human at the heart of the challenge. Using innovative technology, we can discover how that identity can be established, trusted, and strengthened over time. I am Sarah. I am a mother. They want her to have a digital ID. They want these people to have digital IDs. I am a princess. People who live in third world nations that don't have ID. They want to give them a global digital ID. I am a teacher. They make us feel so bad that so many people don't have an ID. So we're going to give them a global ID. Can you show me some identification? No, my house was completely destroyed. I just ran. My house burned down. My driver's license were burned. Well, we're going to put a chip in your hand so you won't lose your ID anymore. Father, I'm trying to find my family. Please. I've been displaced. I've lost my identification papers. I don't have a birth certificate. So put a chip in my hand. I want to fly. I want to take a trip across the world and I don't want to be, have to carry my vaccination paper. So put a chip in me. This is from Accenture. This is from the people that are creating this product. Accenture is the World Economic Forum's choice. They're working with Microsoft to produce a global ID, a microchip to put in your body. And the Bible says you're going to have a chip in your right hand or in your forehead in that day. They'll put it in your phone at first, like China right now. And then if you do anything they don't like about you, they will lower your social credit score and take away your job and take away your bank account. And you won't have any money and you won't have any job and you will be off the grid and you will be, you will starve to death or die. Microsoft, Bill Gates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Towards a digital identity solution. Digital identity. He calls with all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead that no man might buy or sell. Say you have the mark or the name or the number of his name. Folks, we're headed for it. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Prepare for tribulation. Okay, I'm going to finish this up. I'm not going to make this an hour long. It's after midnight now, and I'm recording this.
I'm telling you something. You better start preparing for the great tribulation. It's going to begin in the middle of that last seven years. If, if this Pope, if his seven year action plan with this global climate change agenda, he launched that seven year action plan in May of 2021, he's going to try to get the whole world to sign on to it in November of this year at the COP 26 uh, United Nations conference in Glasgow, Scotland. If you count from November, when they sign on to this thing, that's seven years from there. If you, if you count from May, then that means we're already in the last seven years. And some people say, but I thought that, that, that the covenant of Daniel nine was going to be a middle East peace plan. Friends, this Bible does not teach us that verse simply says he shall confirm a covenant with many or confirm the covenant in the, in the Hebrew language, that article there is uncertain. It says confirm covenant, the Hebrew words confirm covenant. There is no a or the in the Hebrew language. All the Hebrew language says he shall confirm covenant. It doesn't say a covenant or the covenant in the Hebrew language. It's a given that we, we have to assume, and we can't accurately assume it if there is no actual word there in the Hebrew for it. So all we know is that he's going to confirm covenant for seven years with many. And I got to tell you, he's promoting this almost vehemently among one and a half billion Catholics for seven years. He's promoting it among all the great religious leaders of our time. He's promoting it with the Muslim world. He's promoting it with the United Nations. He's going to promote it with industry and, and big tech and big pharma. He's trying to get the whole world. The Pope is confirming covenant with many for seven years. Bible doesn't even say there's going to be peace in the Middle East. Paul said when they say peace and safety, then come a sudden destruction. There is no guarantee in this Bible there's going to be a peace plan between Israel and the Palestinians. There might be, there might not be. I can tell you what's going to happen. Jesus Christ said in Matthew 24, You're going to see that man of sin. He's an Assyrian. Read Isaiah chapter 14, verse 24 to 27, and read Micah chapter 5, verse 5. Both of those verses talk about Jesus Christ coming back to destroy an Assyrian when he comes. That's a Muslim from the region that we now know as Turkey. And it's very possibly going to be this guy, Recep Erdogan, the president of Turkey. Jesus Christ is going to meet an Assyrian and the Pope. Read Revelation 19, verse 20. When Jesus Christ comes back, he's going to meet two men on the Temple Mount. On the holy mountain of God, the Bible said he's going to meet two men, the beast and the false prophet. Now, right now, that European government is basically all Catholic because Virtually all the nations of Europe at this point have been doing the Roman Catholic influence for 1700 years. But the Bible tells us in Daniel seven and eight, there's a little horn going to rise up. Who's diverse from the 10 horns of Europe. And he's going to tear up three of the horns. He's going to pluck up three of the horns of Europe. And he's effectively going to take over the European union. And that's an outsider. And I'm telling you what I believe based on the Assyrian man of sin prophecy of Isaiah 14, Micah five, second Thessalonians chapter two, Matthew 24, 15, and Luke 21, 20, we're going to see a Muslim come in here. Jesus said in Luke 21, 20, when you therefore see Jerusalem compassed with armies, you know that the desolation of Jerusalem is nigh. Jerusalem is going to be compassed with armies, and I know who they're going to be because the Bible says it's going to be the 10 horns of Europe under the leadership of that little horn, that outsider, that man of sin. And it's going to be Gog and Magog, Russia. It's going to be Gomer and Tagarma, Turkey. It's going to be Persia, which is Iran. It's going to be Ethiopia and Libya. And it's going to be the kings of the east, possibly China, are going to come against Jerusalem in the last days. And Jesus said Jerusalem is going to be left desolate and consumed. And Zechariah chapter 13, verses 7 and 8 said that two-thirds of the Jews are going to be destroyed, and one-third of them is going to be tried in the fire like gold and silver is tried in the fire. That, is, that, does, that doesn't sound like any kind of a peace treaty to me. That doesn't sound like there's going to be peace in the Middle East. There's not going to be peace in the Middle East. There's going to be trouble in the Middle East. There's going to be death and destruction in the Middle East. And if you want to, if you want to look and see what's happening, 
Israel right now is leading the world in vaccinations, but it's also leading the world in COVID outbreak. It's also leading the world in deaths. So what am I trying to tell you? The globalists are not going to be stopped. The Bible prophesies consummation and desolation in Israel in the last 42 months. The Bible prophesies a mark of the beast on the whole world for 42 months. Jesus prophesied great tribulation for 42 months. Go ahead and believe all your QAnon stuff. You better believe this Bible. Go ahead and believe all your Nasara Josara crowd. Go ahead and believe all your patriot movements. You better believe this Bible. There's not a patriot movement that's going to negate the words of God Almighty. Nobody's going to stop the prophecies. Nobody's going to stop the globalists because the world government is ordained of God for the last days. Just as surely as God ordained a flood in Noah's day, just as certainly as God promised to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, just as certainly God said he was going to send the Assyrians in on the northern tribes of Israel because of Jeroboam's sin and worshiping the golden calves, just as certainly as God prophesied through Jeremiah and Ezekiel and Daniel that the Babylonians were coming, they came and they took them away for 70 years. That's how certainly the mark of the beast is just around the corner. That's how certainly we are about to enter the great tribulation for 42 months at the last half of that seven years. That's how certain nobody ever stopped the word of the Lord and nobody is ever going to stop the word of the Lord. I'm telling you, get your house in order. I'm not going, I'm not going to make this any longer. Save yourself from this untoward generation. I can't tell you how, lo how, how long you and I will last in this thing. There are going to be martyrs, no doubt by the thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, perhaps in the millions. There are going to be Christians who say, I will not take the mark, and they're going to be incarcerated. They're going to be killed, many of them. They're going to be deprived of their freedoms. Great tribulation. You're not going to get out of it. You are not going to escape it unless you die. The globalists are not going to be stopped. You better prepare. If we live, Paul said, we which are alive remain when the Lord comes, we be called to meet him in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. If you survive that whole seven years by the miraculous grace of God, you'll be caught up in the rapture when he comes at Armageddon to fight. And the Bible said he's coming in flaming, flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and who obey not the gospel. Jesus is coming like a mighty man of war. He's going to cry. Yea, he's going to uh, prevail against his enemies. Jesus is going to come. He's going to destroy the beast, the false prophet. He's going to destroy Gog and Magog. He's going to destroy Gomer and Tagarma. He's going to destroy Persia. He's going to destroy the kings of the east. He's going to destroy the ten horns from Europe. Jesus Jesus Christ is going to establish his kingdom in Jerusalem. The 12 apostles of the lamb are going to govern over the 12 tribes of Israel and of the increase of his kingdom and power, government and power. There shall be no end for 1000 years. Jesus is going to rule on this earth and the saints of God and the Christian church of the last 2000 years will rule and reign with him for a thousand years as Kings and priests. And then heaven and earth will pass away and there'll be a new heaven and a new earth and a new Jerusalem built by God Almighty. And the judgment seat of Christ will be set. And every man, woman, boy, and girl that ever lived will stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And they'll either, the, the wicked will be cast into hell and the saints of God will be given an interest into the kingdom of heaven for all the ages of eternity. And that's what the Bible says. If you don't believe the Bible, you don't have a plan because the globalists are not going to be stopped. That's all I'm going to say. There's no use in me being mad about it because it's a truth. Regardless of what your emotion is, 
you can, if you want to hate Ken Rajo and say, Ken Rajo is the biggest heretic I've ever heard. You go ahead and do that. You go ahead and write all your nasty remarks anywhere you want to get on your forums and, and condemn Ken Raggio to hell because he's a fatalist. He's a negative naysayer. He's a troublemaker. He's a false prophet, blah, 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 blah. Go read your Bible and tell me I'm wrong. You can't. You're not going to stop the globalists. The great tribulation is on the way. The Pope is going to be the false prophet. The Assyrian man of sin is going to be the troublemaker in Israel at the last wars in Israel. And Jesus is going to destroy him when he comes. You're not going to stop that. So if you want to survive the next seven years, you better figure out now how you're going to do it. <laughs> that climate change agenda is going to take away cows and beefsteak. That climate change agenda is going to take away private property. It's going to take away water rights. You're not going to be able, it's going to be against the law to plant your own garden. I mean, they got it all. It's all written down. The United Nations has already got it in black and white. It's already written how it's going to be. If you want to survive, you better figure out how you're going to survive. You better buy some groceries, put some stuff away. You better, you better just, <laughs> you better study prepping. If you want to survive, you better, you better start studying how to prep. You say, well, I don't believe in prepping. Well, then you don't believe in Joseph because Joseph was a prepper and Joseph not only saved Egypt from seven years of famine, he saved the 70 elders of Israel. He saved his own daddy, Jacob. He saved his brethren that hated him and tried to kill him. Joseph became the savior of the world in his day because he was a prepper. And this Bible said that they that know their God shall be strong and do exploits. He said, they of understanding shall teach many. God's going to use people who are prepared in those last days. The people that walk with God and that believe the Bible and don't have any problem with the prophecies, they accept the prophecies at face value and do their diligence to prepare themselves. Those are the people that will be mightily used of God in the last days. They may become martyrs eventually, but before they die, God's going to use them greatly. And those that doubt and fear and unbelief, those who are in denial, those who say, I don't believe and I'm not going to do anything, those are the ones that are going to be the quickest destroyed. Or they will compromise and take the mark of the beast and survive on the mark of the beast until judgment day, and then they're going to go to hell. Do you want to take the mark just to survive three and a half years and then spend eternity in hell? Because the Bible said in Revelation 14, uh, 9, if you take the mark of the beast, you're going to spend eternity in hell. You better not take that mark. You better not take the mark of the beast. You will spend eternity in hell. The Bible says that. Somebody said, well, those sins can be forgiven. The Bible says if you take the mark, you're going to spend eternity in hell. That doesn't say anything about repentance or forgiveness. If you got that mark in your body when you die, you're going to go to hell. That's what the Bible says. I'm just telling you what the Bible says. I'm not making this stuff up. If you don't like the Bible, then you and I are enemies, I guess, or you, at least you're an enemy of me because I believe in the Bible and I'm going to preach the Bible as long as I've got breath. And you need to believe this book. Forget all your new, new age garbage. Forget all your easy believism Christianity. Forget all your cheap grace. Forget all that stuff and get your heart right with God. Repent of your sins. Turn away from your sins. Renounce your sins. Quit your sins. Ask God for mercy. Be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, according to Acts 2.38, and receive the Spirit of God. God will give you the Holy Ghost. You will pray in the Spirit. You will speak with other tongues, and God would lead and guide and direct you by His Spirit through these hard times, and God will strengthen you and give you faith and courage and power, and you will see many signs and wonders and miracles as you walk with God in your tribulation. But if you do nothing, if you do nothing, you will be lost. I'm talking about preparing. Prepare spiritually. First of all, get your heart right with God and do what you need to do to be saved. Live a godly, holy life. Separate yourself from sin and Satan. Separate yourself from the bad things of this world. Separate yourself from the world's thinking, from the cultural influence. Separate yourself from the social influences that are bad. Associate with godly people, men and women that love the Bible, love truth, righteousness, and holiness. Quit associating with that drinking and cussing crowd out yonder, that partying crowd. That's the wrong crowd. That crowd's not going to be saved. You better get in, in, in tune with some people that loves God and pray and fast and read your Bible and go to church and do what you need to do as long as you can in Jesus' name.
physically and financially do all you can. If you'll do what you can, you remember what you remember back yonder when, um, when that lady came to the prophet Elisha, she said, uh, my husband is dead now and the creditors have come to take away my son. And I don't know what I'm going to do. And the prophet said, go get some vessels, go, go all over town and collect all the vessels you can collect. And let's see what God will do. So she went and borrowed people's pottery. She borrowed clay jars from everybody she knew. She filled her whole house up with clay jars. And she had one pot left of oil, had a little bit of oil. And she started pouring that oil. And the Bible said that every one of those vessels were filled with that oil because of a mighty miracle of God. And when she had every vessel that she had prepared filled, the Bible said the oil stayed. The original vessel quit flowing. What does that mean? That means if you will move in good faith toward God, if you will move in good faith and expect a miracle, expect God almighty to meet your need. If you'll do what you can, God will do what he can. And I promise you, he can do better than you can do. If you'll do a little bit, he'll do a lot. If you'll take one step, he'll take two. But if you do nothing, the Bible said to him that hath shall be given to him that hath not shall be taken away. If you do nothing to save yourself, you will be lost. But if you act now, if you are proactive to save yourself from this untoward generation, according to Acts 240, then God will save you. You do what you can and God will do what you can't. And that's my message to you tonight. Thank you for listening to me. God bless you. Visit my website at kenradgill.com. Sign up on my mailing list. Get my daily Bible studies, one email a day from Bible studies. Go to amazon.com. Check out all nine of my books, the Bible, David Bible Companion or Daily Bible Lesson. These books will be handy when you lose your internet connection one of these days. When you realize you can't get on the internet and look up stuff, you can go to these books here, the Daniel Prophecies, and they'll explain all about these end time prophecies. Or you can go to my Daily Bible Companions, and there's 1,200 prophecy lessons there. You'll get explanations for all the events you're going to be witnessing because they're, they're taught right there in those books. You get that book, The Great Doctrines of the Bible, or get a book called Praying on Purpose, Praying for Results, How Men Prevail with God. That'll teach you how to pray during these hard times. Another book called Treasures of Darkness, How to See the Glory of God in the Darkest Trials of Your Life. Several other books. Check them out on Amazon. If you live in the United States, have an American address, I'll send you the whole set, all nine books for $125, and I'll pay the ship. And check that out. There's a link below. Also, there's one other thing. A lot of people are asking about how to resist this mandate to take that shot. There's a link below that shows you how to legally resist that mandate. Check that link out. It's, it's not my link. It's a third party, but it gives you a lot of options there. If you want to say, no, I will not do that. Also, there's a donation link. If you'll help Ken Radjo, I'd appreciate that. May the Lord bless you. Thanks to all of you who have helped me in the past. May the Lord bless all of you for your support. Also, please help me by sharing these videos. A lot of times these algorithms work against us when Facebook and YouTube sees me saying or hears me saying things that they don't like, then they don't help spread this video. But you're you when you click like and when you share and when you post stuff on here, that helps to spread this message. So help me do that. And the Lord bless you for that. God bless you. I'll see you next time. Good night.